when you got that first deal, it took you about 30 days to get that first deal. Yeah. How did you keep getting that consistent deals? Right. And how did you move into basically juggling everything and running the show? Um, so for me, I would say like it was I'm very just money driven and just, you know, I set I set small goals, achievable goals for myself on a monthly basis. Right. I'm not going to be like, oh, shit, I, I don't I don't look at it as like on a year. I look things like on a month and day by day, too. Right. Um, so for the way we went from like. I let me back up a little bit. It's it, it was hard to fail in this in this system because everything was already right. in place. I just needed to. Right. Learn, right. So I didn't have to come in here and reinvent the wheel. I just needed to be like, OK, that's what they used to do. Here's what we're going to do. Right. Uh, I didn't have to recreate any systems. I just had to learn everything that was already in place. Right. Uh, and it's, you know, when you got a marketing channel like Chris and it's just there's plenty of money to pump into marketing. So it's not like I, I don't have to worry about shit. Where am I going to come up with 40 grand next month? It's already there. I know it is. I just need to make sure the bills are paid and that, you know, we're not going negative. So I, I don't have all that other stress right. that a lot of people do. Um, it's just lock up deals, get them sold, lock up deals, get them sold, lock them up, get them sold, lock them up, get them sold. Right. You know, I don't have to worry about paying the bills. I don't have to worry about anything else. No, absolutely. So like not, you're not really too worried about the overhead too much. Um, when it comes to um, doing like getting these locked up, um, how are you struggling with the dispositions in this market right now? Um. So what was it? So where were you at right now? We're December. So, Back in when did the market start to turn like April, May, something like that, right? Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So I remember I had locked up a couple right. deals in uh, up in Northern California, Sacramento County. I had one down here, and I and like I had a really good like it was like a six or seven day period where I had some really good deals locked up, and I thought, okay, well, you know, I'm down in you know in the high fifty percent area of locking them up. And then our normal pocket buyers, they're just, they're like, nope, nope, nope. So then in our weekly, our weekend meeting, we're going over everything. And I just, I remember I came to Chris and I was like, bro, like, what am I doing wrong? Because I hadn't experienced it because hmm. when I came in, it was right in the heat of everything, right? You could, you know, hedge funds are buying at 105%. Buyers aren't carrying, you know, just <laughs> like buy, 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 buy. So, uh, yep he started to help me. And then he's like, honestly, he's like, so for a couple of his coaching students, he's like, why don't you just Monday morning, we're just going to do a call. And he's like, you just sit in on it. Right. And it's kind of like, it all comes down to just the sales and negotiating part of the acquisitions part. Once I was educated on what the market was doing and where it was going. Right. I like to, I, li I like to tell sellers on the phone, you know, like, Hey, if, I'm not always going to be a good fit for everybody and that's okay. And I'm okay with that, that I don't buy every single house from every single person I talk to. But if you get one thing out of this conversation, I hope to leave you just a little bit of educated. And I would talk to people because most people aren't, you know, they don't care about where the real estate market is until it's time for them to sell. Right. Yeah. But then all, all they know is, Hey, my neighbor, Bob sold their house eight months ago for a hundred thousand dollars over asking. So why can't I do it? Right. And I just, I'm very thorough. Like if somebody's at home with a computer, I'll tell them, Hey, jump on the computer and let me show you what's selling. And you know, and oh, I like wow. to educate them. So that is what helps me get sellers on board. So I can then lock up the property at a, at a, at a number and walking them through the numbers. I'll be like, Hey, look at this house around the block. This thing's been sitting for 170 days, you know, for an investor like me, I'll tell them, say, Hey, you know what that does for my holding cost? And I, and I just go through the mm. whole process and I work the numbers backwards with them. You know how it okay. is. You get a seller on the phone and be like, oh man, there's a hundred thousand dollars spread between what the house is worth and what you're picking it up from. I'm like, yeah, you know how fast that money's gone. There's no yep. profit, you know, and it works. It works well for me, you know, and it just comes down to, you could really insult somebody if not done properly, you could really offend them and, you know, get hung up on real quick. Absolutely. But it all comes down to that rapport building in the beginning of the call. And even if it's 
you know, the second or third call that that happens, but you know, the follow up, all the, all, in every follow up call, you're building that rapport and you're just constantly, you know, you know, nurturing that relationship with the seller to eventually when you do get to that point, even if it's a couple calls down the road, then they're just, they kind of trust you. You know what I mean? 